G'day fellas, welcome to a casted game. Sporting it on the northwest side of the map. Playing in the color teal as the Marlians. It's Crackity here. And on the southeast side of the map, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't think I'd ever say it again. Playing in the color yellow as the Ottomans, it is the one, the only, the Viper. Yes, he is back once again playing some Age of Empires 4. For anybody who missed it, he did provide an update after the uh, after the Red Bull Wall of Lolt and basically said, hey, look, AoE 4, it's been a good run. It's been fun, but... I'm probably going to be spending most of my time focusing on Age of Empires 2. And we can see Viper's getting back into it. It's great to see. I don't know what's happened. I don't know exactly why we're over here right now. I don't know why why he has returned. Uh, but uh, this day was foretold in the prophecy. And of course, I am very glad to see it. So Viper going to be going up against Crackity here. Going to be finding out the hard way how good Marley and trade is, I suspect. Now, Crackity unfortunately doesn't have the best spawn here. Uh, I do actually consider this matchup to be a little bit of a counter matchup uh, for the Marley. And so the... Oh, look at this. Look at... Oh, get away from him. Actually takes him out. What have we got going on here? Look at this. We've got... Oh, my... Er, the earliest walls. And can we just take a look? Can we just admire... Hold on. I think... Can you actually get behind that? Oh, I think you can 100%. Look at that. Crackity trying to find a way through the mountains all of a sudden. Look at this. Look at these walls coming out right now. 90 second walls against the Viper. That's how much Crackity is scared of Viper coming in here. But I do consider this a little bit of a counter matchup, at least in the early game, uh, for the Marlians. Just because the Ottomans, they do like to go early aggression. We've seen them do it many a time before. Gonna get good value out of this early Spearman. And Viper does spot the wall out. So that should already be a bit of an indication as to what his enemy is gonna be doing. What he's gonna be up to. So Viper with the Ottomans. For anybody who missed it at Red Bull Wall lol, Viper unfortunately didn't have the best run uh didn't get to didn't get to a whole lot of practice with age of empires 4 obviously his focus was defending his title in age of empires 2 which meant that the majority of his time was was spent focused on aoe 4 now of course when it comes to age of empires 4 you guys will remember that uh the viper is an absolute goat uh he won genesis if, if i remember correctly yeah it was it was him against the mister in the grand final uh so it was uh it was an absolute hell of a game so viper has been the best in age of empires 4 before the question is whether he's going to be able to do it again but over on the other side of the map we begin to see crackety here moving up towards you you guys know exactly what's coming three vills moving out this early on it's gonna it's gonna be exactly what you think it is it is gonna be the saharan trade network so no surprises there very bold to be going for the saharan trade network but i'm curious to see exactly how crackety plays it uh, curious positioning here on the Saharan Trade Network. Can I just say, I would have, like, thought an extra tile in, but I guess the whole idea here is that he, uh, he, he wants to kind of defend this trade post. He's probably going to put some walls up directly in front of it. That way the Saharan Trade Network defends it. But my concern is that traders are going to come in through here, uh, and, and hit the bottom side of the trade post. So I, I suspect probably what Crackity is going to do is just put a small wall that guides the traders up to here. Because if you just wall it across like that, then they will walk into the influence of the Saharan trade network. But the age up coming through now, only three villagers tapping away. So he went with a four house opening. So definitely, uh, it, it's pretty standard to be going for a four house opening. And obviously using the leftover 50 wood from the straggler tree on his lumber camp. Actually, he's, he's gathered up a total of... Uh, of uh, 300. Oh, that's probably because he's just used the straggler tree for this mining, or this uh, lumber camp. Makes sense. But over on the other side of the map, Twin Minaret Madressa coming down for the Viper right now. Definitely, uh, it, when it comes to his base building, I would say Viper's base building is actually pretty decent here. My only concern is that this uh, military school seems a little bit far away from everything. Like, you could probably just put it right next to the town center, that sort of thing. Uh, but, but the Twin Minaret Madressa positioning is perfect. Uh, he's probably going to be able to push the deer in towards his Twin Minaret Madressa. And I think the question for me is, what does Viper look to do with regard to his strategy, his overall strategy? Because he knows that his enemy is going to be trading. So there, there is, in, in my opinion, there's probably one strategy that, that you should be looking for here, and it's not a second town center. You don't ever want to try and match the economy of your enemy, but I, I feel like you've rather got to go for a bit of an all-in against this Marlian type of play. Try and get in earlier, try and get in behind the walls. Villager almost going down right there, but and, and as a result, we see the Spearman getting responded to with a, a few villagers in the town center, but the age-up does come through for the Viper. We'll, uh, we'll ride on board with him. There we go. Uh, and, and see exactly what he looks to do here. Uh, as he does have quite a few villagers still on gold. So it might lend itself to a bit of a uh, an upgrade potentially coming through. We do see Blacksmith. 
It's not going to be a heavy focus. We, we still don't actually see him taking a huge amount of wood just yet. But we're right on board with Crackety because his age up has just come through as well over on that side of the map. So Crackety going to be losing out an early house here. But an archery range is going to get dropped down just to respond to this. And this is what I think is so powerful about the Ottomans is they force the enemy to make an archery range. They just say, hey, you're going to have to make a range. I know you don't want to. I know you want to play... Uh, you know, uh, spearmen, horsemen, that sort of thing. Well, you're going to have to make archers anyway, just because you're going to have to deal with this. Now, you can obviously get spears out to deal with this. Horsemen aren't going to be that effective. But over on the other side of the map, we do see the walls beginning to come down. Crackety not going with too aggressive of a wall. And spearmen being denied out. Viper trying his best to get behind enemy lines and doing the right thing already. We can see he's got an attack move or is actually attacked up onto one of these walls here. And that's going to mean Crackety needs to respond to this. Viper knows exactly what is going on right now. So he, do not count Viper out at all. He knows what his enemy is up to. Now it's a beautiful little spot over here on this west side of the map for Crackety. He gets a lot of coverage from the Saharan trade network. So much so that he's not even walling it off. He knows that he's going to be able to hit units here. He might need to wall right here. But for the most part, he should be okay, at least for the early game. So I do like that. But adding in more houses now. Around the pit mine. And see that he's focusing down the scout here with the uh, with the archer and Viper going to take advantage of that. Looking to push in. Falls back as soon as he realizes that the archer's been refocused onto the spearman. Still under attack on that north side. We'll ride on board with Viper and see how he does as the first of the points come through. It's, he's going to be going with Anatolian Hills. So Viper, a I would almost say a little bit behind in the meta, the mindset. The way that people are playing at the moment is a larger focus on meta drums. But I think overall, it's still going to be pretty solid here for him. He's got so much food in the base. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. He's got those eight extra sheep. He's got the deer, got the berries, got the twin minaret madressa. He's not going to need to expand outside of this for food for until probably 17, 18 minutes. And that's kind of crazy to think of because it, it just seems ludicrous that someone could do that. But we do see now more spearmen moving out into the center of the map he's got plenty of spears out here yet to see any upgrades coming through for them because he's yet to drop down a barracks but there it comes in now barracks and he has switched over the military schools to spahi so knowing knowing exactly what he needs to do we don't see oh actually we do see double broad axe coming through for the viper and going for the wheelbarrow i'm loving it so far and he's just leaving the two vills on gold so almost playing this a little bit like the english would you guys will be familiar with those english build orders from you know 12 months ago where you'd basically just leave two villages. I, I say from 12 months ago because no one really goes for this style of English play anymore. But you just leave two villages on gold and slowly you'd trickle in your upgrades. You'd get your plus one range attack. You'd get your plus one uh, melee defense. You'd get your siege engineering slowly coming through. And then eventually you get your, your other upgrades. But look at Crackety just walling the entire map at the moment. Spearman going to be going down here over on this west flank. There is a nice little position here the Viper can try and attack into and and look to hit that back trade line but at the same time crackety still yet to wall up all angles of attack now remember it is going to take some time before crackety is able to establish himself as the supreme trader he's gonna he's gonna be behind on the military for quite some time and in that time viper has a chance to strike and the question is does he know where to strike? Does he know how to strike? Does he know what to strike? These are all big questions. And Viper, I can I can tell you right now, he's come back. This is only his third game, I think. No, actually, I take that back. I, th I think it might be his eighth game uh, because I, I believe he is now ranked. Um, and uh, so I think I think this might be his seventh or eighth game. Uh, I didn't actually realize he was playing. I was, uh, I was chatting through Crackety's history and I'm like, oh my God, you got a Viper game, Crackety? Why aren't you telling me about the Viper game, Crackety? Get me in on it. So anyway, anyway. It's, uh, it's good to see that Viper is back. I'm excited. I, I don't know what his plans are for Age of Empires 4. But uh, nonetheless, I'm excited to see him here. And I'm hoping he can pull out the dub today. I love Crackety, but I tell you what, I got a whole lot more love for Viper. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a fanboy. I'm a, I'm a fanboy. I mean, you could put Viper up against my mum and I'd still be cheering for Viper. Uh, and <laughs> I just realized that sounds terrible. Sorry, mum. Sorry, Viper. Both mum and Viper. Actually, I know mum watches. I don't know if Viper watches. But uh, <laughs> it didn't mean to sound that way. I, I just mean like, you know, I, I, I am I'm very loyal to the cause of the Viper. Let's just say that much. But I'm loving the early opening from Viper here. It, it feels like it's making a lot of sense, the battering ram coming through. And hopefully what we see uh, Viper do is look to break through these walls and then just park it right here. That's what he wants to do. Just park it right there. But we can see that the numbers starting to slowly improve for Crackety. He's getting up there when it comes to the military count at the moment. Sitting on 11, Viper on 26. So does outnumber his enemy quite substantially. Now, I wonder if he can move the Donzos right up to this point here and then siege the battering ram. And look at this, just so 
damn annoying with these walls just non-stop viper getting walled out of the marlian base repeatedly trade account up to 10 keep in mind he also has the uh the saharan trade network together with those toll outposts he's got three up so far and now viper continuing to push through archers moving in i think he realizes that there's a little bit of a gap and indeed he does begin to push through focusing down the donzo it's viper doing well first donzo goes down second donzo down as well spy gonna make it through he uses fortitude a bit of a bold move right there but he does get walled out and with that all donzo is gonna be going down here on the front line he also focuses down some villages and now spahi gonna be looking to try and clean up the rest of the position donzo on the backside needs to fall back and indeed he does military count in favor of viper heavily 26 to 9 but now looking to come forward once again needs to make sure that he's careful with this positioning up towards the north side, we see a, a spearman breaking through. Viper doing the right thing. He knows exactly what to do here. Try and keep the enemy on their toes. But now where are those numbers for Viper? If, if a rewall comes through right now, and it looks like a rewall is indeed going to be coming through, Viper could be in a bit of a, a tough position. I'd almost be cautious, or I'd almost be tempted to say, Viper, bring a villager and start counter-walling across these passages so that your enemy can't rewall. Because you can see right now, the javelin throwers are having a decent time here. Viper needs more Sparky, needs more archers. He's producing military at the Wazoo. Third military school has come in. Opting to go with military campus. No real surprise here, but Viper just cleaning this up completely, forcing the enemy back to his town center. And now Viper going to have a good time over on those trade lines. Question, what does Crackity do with the traders as the traders now all of a sudden going to be exposed two shots. There we go. First one goes down. Second one going to be going down as well. Spearman moving forward and look, he continues. In continues insanely, Crackity. Wants to try and get this wall up. Viper doing a decent job of shutting down that Malian trade. Battering ram literally parked on top. He parks the battering ram on top. He says, no, sir, you cannot park here. This is a disabled car space, and I am the one driving this vehicle. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know why it had to be disabled. I mean, it could have been, it could, it, it could have been like reserved parking for all I care. I guess for me, it's just like in, in Australia, we've got a, a very high priority uh, for, for disabled car parks. So, you know, when you, when you park a vehicle like a battering ram on top of it, it just it 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 it, it wields that uh, that <laughs> that value that extra value but viper still pushing in with aggression i'm loving the, the opening here from the viper uh it looks like trade still consistently running here javelin throw is going to be moving over towards this uh this north side now I, I wonder if viper knows some other tricks of the trade so one of the tricks of the trade that you can do uh when you're playing oh he's got the villager it, it, he knows the trick you come in and you wall this passage right here and it stops your enemy from getting any more trade through their traders just won't move they have to find the long way around but you can see right now the battering ram is going to be going down villager going to be moving through villager no don't 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 do it villager no villager no i know that you're a bold man and i know that you care about the <laughs> not villager not like this oh, there's another villager is he rallying villagers right now don't tell me he's rallying does viper have the town center rally towards his enemy no he doesn't he's just he's just got villagers coming up here but makes a bit of a, a bit of a mistake but still shutting down the trade on the north side so doing a decent job trading numbers uh for crackity he's actually got zero traders at the moment you can see he's decided to just camp them out for the moment he said you know what we're losing traders we're not gonna bother and so all the traders have been shut down viper completely shuts down crackity's trade seven traders eight traders here nine traders the numbers slowly building back up and crackity looking decent as he cleans this position up but where is viper's mass at this point viper should be on four five oh, stables stables viper going for stables viper viper not tuning into the aussie drongo ottoman video you just want to be making rangers my friend you just want to be going heavy spaghetti on the archery rangers but look at this we've got an age up coming through from the viper not something i expected in a second town center as well damn viper okay all right, Viper looking to play the long game against the odd, uh, against the Malians, and that is something that I would definitely warn against Viper. Uh, the Malians probably... Uh, I, I'm tempted to say one of the best late game saves out there. The longer the game goes, when the Malians are playing, the better their chances. And so much so that I would rate them probably a bit higher than the English. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I did post a video uh, quite a while ago called Malian Trade Empire is Actually Insane. And we saw Crackity looking to emulate success with the Malian trade that he's had before against the English, but he had a really bad trading post spawn. And as a result, it meant that his trade was really suboptimal. And despite that, despite that, he was still able to keep up with an English player in the late game for like 45 minutes. He did eventually lose out. But it just goes to show even with very, very poor trade, Malian trade is insane. Another level. But we now see Viper aging up. MIA 
coming through. Expect another two minutes for that Manganel to come in. Crackity going to need to age up himself if he wants to deal with it. Can always go into Sofa instead. Viper losing a lot of forces on the front line now. 15 minutes into this game. We'll switch it over to Income per minute. Keep in mind, Income does not provide any evidence as to the free units the Viper is getting at the moment. Viper is getting a lot of free units from his military schools, but Village is going to be going down at the moment. Crackity here with a slight Villager lead. We do see the traders have resumed back towards the north side of the map. Everybody a, b a little bit happy now. Viper still at this point on the defensive. More barracks coming up. Look at the production coming in from Viper. Viper's Ottomans actually kind of crazy right now. I, I, I got to get a picture of this. I got to get a picture of this. I, I, I don't know. If, I don't think this will get rid of the, the thing at the top. But I got to get a picture of whatever. What, of, uh, of everything else though. That is just. That's beautiful. That's going on the thumbnail right there. All right. Well, it looks like we've got a knight out. Keep in mind that the javelin throws have got a high base damage. So even up against the knights, they're not going to do particularly well. Or rather, the, the knight's not going to do particularly well. But we do see Musafati warriors coming out. And my main concern right now for Viper is that he doesn't really have anything to do with this. We do have a Manganel coming out in another 45 seconds, I, I would say. Yeah, 42 seconds. Uh, but, and the men-at-arms are coming out as well. But men-at-arms, once again, don't do terribly well against javelin throws. So Crackity identifying that... Look, even if my enemy ages up, I'm going to have javelin throws. I'm going to have a timing window here of about two minutes before those mangonels do make their way out onto the field. And I can be aggressive. I can be e aggressive uh, before then. Vibe down about 10 villagers at the moment. Still economy, absolutely kicking along. Still got plenty. Look, as, as I said, I mean, we're at the 17 minute mark and Viper still very happily under here. I think he's moved out to the berries on the front. So not 100% not correct, but the mangonel about to come out. Let's see how much damage he's able to pull off with it. Hopefully he's rallied it to the bottom side here. No, don't, don't pop it towards the front, Viper. Don't pop it towards the front. Don't do it. The Musafati are already out there. It's out the front. No, Viper, not like this. And Viper just falling apart at the seams. Manganel still not paying attention. Musafati going to be able to clean it up without the Manganel. Ah, oh, Viper. You can tell he's finding his feet. You can tell he's finding his feet. He was looking really good in the early game. And he knew from a stand, like fr from the... You know, the, the perspective of how should I play this matchup, he knew. He says, I've got to deny trade. I've got to try and shut it down. And at the same time, he wants to try and scale into the late game. The problem is, playing the scaling game against the Marlians is never a good time. So I feel like had he gone for a few more archery ranges, really looked to commit with the battering rams up towards the north and just camped on this trade line, it would have been a different story. It would have been completely different for him. But now it starts to look a little bit more worrisome. Viper is still with a... A score lead. And Men at Arms going to be moving back towards these Javelin Throws. We do see Villagers getting a quick wall in. That's going to force them, the Javelin Throws back onto the other side. Men at Arms going to be running through Medic here to provide a little bit of assistance. Probably going to get sniped out indeed. It does. Good night, sweet prince. Oh, my lord. Those Javelins, they just keep on throwing and throwing and throwing and following everything. But Viper really needs some walls on the front line just to protect those Manganels. Men at Arms going to be able to clean this up. And over on the other side of the map, we do see the Age Up now coming through. It's going to be the Farimba Garrison coming out for Crackity here. 16 villagers going to be tapping away. Look at Viper breaking through on the other side of the map. He's taken down some walls at the front or maybe walked through some uh, some overchopped wood lines and does make it through to the trader line. Now, keep in mind, even though traders are tagged as cavalry, in the most recent update, the developers removed the cavalry tag. So even though they're tagged as cavalry, I know that sounds silly, even though they're tagged as cavalry, spearmen do not get bonus damage against them. So we can watch right now. It's going to take a lot of attacks for them to kill this trader. It used to it used to be like three three attacks and the traders would go down. You could just park the spearmen right here and they would just murder everything. But it's not the case. Not anymore. Or Safari on the backside. Looks like back towards the base of Viper. He's preparing the push. The men at arms coming out in force right now. Manganel's still in queue. More Musafati running out. Krakeny knows exactly what to do in this matchup. He knows, knows that on the defensive, it's going to be the... the the men at arms that are coming out. All right. Viper's still putting pressure over on that, that northeast side. Another Vizier point going to be coming through. Does he opt for the Janissaries here? I feel like Janissary Company might actually be a good choice here with this timing push. Doesn't look like it. At least not yet. Could have gone into one of the other directions. But now Viper. Indeed, it is an overchop. It's going to come. It's going to allow him to get behind the base. Now, what did we see from Crackety before? We saw Musafati. How many Musafati have we got? We've got 27 Musafati. They've been upgraded to veterans. Only got ranged armor at the moment, but they just pick up their melee armor now. He's got archers here, which are going to be effective against them, but there's only four of them, so not a huge amount. Musafati just able to fight one-on-one -on -one against these, these men-at-arms, and the men-at-arms ripping through them at the moment. Number advantage is definitely holding strong. 
the same time a little bit on the front side it looks like the outpost is going to get up there for crackity here so provide a little bit more coverage but the man at arms doing a decent job more Musafati running in. He's pumping them out non-stop from the Farimba Garrison. We can see right now, Crackety sitting on 2,700 gold a minute. He is just pumping these guys out non-stop. And the Musafati do eventually engulf their opponents. Surrounding them, destroying them. And look at the cows, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the ranch, baby. But there ain't no rams here. We've got a different type of ranch for you today. This is a cattle ranch. Oh, we're going to have to be so careful now, Musafati. Gonna take a Manganel shot to the face. He continues trying to kite back here. Keep in mind, Musafati, not a ranged unit, so Manganel doesn't do particularly well against them. But he does manage to keep it alive. Archers doing a decent job, but they are getting cleaned up by the Javelins. Gets a nice little shot off. Springled in placement, missing, missing its shot. And Viper actually looking pretty solid once again. But remember, Crackety is pumping out units non-stop. That Farimba Garrison just pumping units towards the front line. He's got plenty of production here. Look at this. Javelin throwers. Musafati. Everything coming out. He's just going with the Musafati Javelin combo. Archer number's still looking good for the Viper. He's pumping them out non-stop. And I'm loving the fact he's got the Mangano. He's gone for Siege Cruise, I've just realized. And a forward keep going to be coming down for the Viper. So this could be it. The nail in the coffin. This could be the beginnings of the end right now for Crackety. Still, those archer numbers looking really good uh, for the Viper. He's going to be able to kite back slowly. He needs to make sure that this, this Mangonel does not go down, but it's going to get surrounded and it's going to get one shot. Indeed, it will. No way you're repairing against that. And Viper, a very bold decision to bring only four villagers, three villagers up towards this keep. It is, uh, it is a doubtful keep, let's just say that much. Inspired by a fellow GLT member. But Viper trying to hold on. Villager count at the moment, a little bit behind for the Viper. And keep in mind, there are traders working for Crackety, working overtime. Men at arms on the front line doing a decent job. More Musafati running in. But the numbers for javelin throwers are, are increasing. I, I want to see more villagers pulled from Viper. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. 11 villagers. Now we're, now we're in business, Viper. But he's rallying towards the front line. We can see men at arms, archers, Manganel coming out as well. Keep in mind that's only one Manganel. It does show as two. Uh, but it is not correct. It is not correct. Villagers now getting picked off. Look at the javelin throwers. Having, a, having an absolute field day out here. Just... Taking down those villagers one by one, Crackety is just shift targeting them. You can you can see right there. If we double click them, he's probably just shift, 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 shift. Not even doing it. He's focusing the men at arms now. So much damage coming out from these Musafati. An extra plus two. Second mango comes out. Viper looking to try and clear the floor with the Manganel. Almost gets a shot off right there, but the, the keep continues to go up. Second keep needs to come up a little bit further. I'd love to see the keep here, where he can begin building towards keeping down this position. But keep in mind. As I say, keep about 17 times in the last sentence. But there's always the possibility Cracky can Crackety can just trade down here. I called him Cracky. Crackety can just trade down on this angle instead. Not a lot of Malians realize it, but it is just as efficient. Gonna have, have to add in a few more outposts, but that's okay. Trebuchet now out for Crackety. Score lead's pretty decent for him. A little bit of a lull. Siege Workshop coming out on the front line. Blacksmith also going to be thrown down to increase that that training speed. Looks like the keep... It was a swing and a miss. I don't know exactly what happened there. Trebuchet missing the keep. Only taking 11 damage right there. But Sofa Warrior is coming out. Huge amount of Sofa. Sofa actually... The Sofa switch right now could be enough to counter and destroy Viper in this position. The keep is going to be up here. No boiling oil in just yet. But there are so many Sofa. Something I didn't expect. He's got 15 Sofa at the moment. These guys get a bonus against infantry, which means both the archers and the men at arms. So he's going to need something to deal with this. Probably going to have to be Spearman. But th that switch is going to take too long. And we can see Viper now switching over to Spearman. But with this keep coming up in the center of the map, the trebuchet is already going to be able to deal with it. And we see the second trebuchet now coming up. So we're going to be able to overwhelm this position. Viper was holding on with men at arms archers. But fortunately, Crackety realizes, I've got to switch to Sofa. He does it perfectly. Absolutely beautiful timing coming out from Crackety right there. And now Viper's on the defensive. We see more Spearmen, but they're, they're hardened Spearmen. He doesn't even have the veterancy upgrade just yet. You can see it coming through for him. And we also see the, the Genissaries. Perfect timing on the Genissaries coming out for Viper right now, holding the line. This is exactly what he needs, his final point. He said, you know what? We're just going to throw it on the Genissaries. Get it out there. These guys are going to be able to power through the cavalry here, but the number's still not looking good. At the same time, Musafati eating up the Manganel over on that west side. And still Viper holds on. On this front line position, not looking terrible. Genissary came just at time. It was just in time to clutch Genissary save right there for the Viper. But is it going to be enough? Because behind this, we've got a Fortress of the Huntress coming down. Well, Fort of the Huntress, but we're, we're pretty close to it. 
And Crackity is now up by 2k score. So does the Genesary even matter? Probably not at this point because Crackity is so far ahead. The consequence of playing late game right now against a civilization that loves the late game is that you lose. And Viper taps out. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this Viper cast. It's great to see him back here. It's great to have him back on the Rift. Well, he's not really on the Rift because we're not playing League of Legends, but you know, you know what I mean. Anyway, make sure you check out Crackity. Make sure you check out Viper. I'll leave links in the description and I will catch you guys in the next one.